Hello lovely students and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today's lesson is truly perfect. <laughs> We're going to cover the perfect tenses. As I have heard you loud and clear, these are the tenses that you struggle most with. Don't worry, it's not your fault. I often feel frustrated when I see lessons on the perfect tenses or explanations in grammar books. I don't feel like they're clear enough. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the perfect tenses and you will probably find that the way I explain them is different from how you've been taught before. I promise you that when you're done with this lesson, you're going to feel much more confident about how to use the past, present and future perfect simple tenses in three key ways. To help you even more, I have also created the perfect ebook. This is a digital PDF that ended up being so big it's become an ebook. I'm letting you have this for free. It contains everything that we cover in today's video in more detail with more examples. And there is a secret link to access our interactive exercise pack. This isn't available anywhere else. These are really gorgeous exercises that you can use to test your understanding of what I teach you today. If you would like to download the perfect ebook and gain access to the perfect tenses exercise pack, just click on the link in the description box. You enter your name and your email address and that PDF containing that secret link will arrive directly in your inbox. After that, you'll automatically receive my free weekly PDFs, news, course updates and offers. It's a free service. You can unsubscribe at any time. Okay, back to the perfect tenses or should I say the perfect aspect? I don't normally talk about tense versus aspect in my videos, but I think it's important and useful to mention it today. We only have two tenses in English. Present, I go, she goes, and past, I went, she went. Aspects add information about the way we view a verb. For example, an aspect can show whether an action is complete or continuing. When we use the perfect aspect, we look back from a certain point in time to another point in time. I'm going to explain lots more about this and I will give you lots of examples. I am going to refer to them as the perfect tenses from now on because I think that's the name most of you are familiar with. We don't have to overcomplicate this. So let's talk about how we form the perfect tenses. The present perfect simple and the past perfect simple have very similar forms. We form positive sentences in the present perfect simple with subject plus have or has plus past participle. And we form the past perfect simple with subject plus had plus past participle. I have been to London. I had been to London. To form negative sentences, we add not after have, has or had. For example, she has not been to London. She had not been to London. And to form questions, we invert the subject and have, has or had. Had she been to London? We form positive sentences in the future perfect simple with subject plus will have plus past participle. I will have been to London. To form negative sentences, we add not after will. I will not have been to London. And to form questions, we invert the subject and will. Will they have been to London? In speech and informal writing, we often use contractions. Have is often contracted to of, apostrophe V-E, and has is often contracted to apostrophe S, pronounced S or Z, depending on whether an unvoiced or voiced sound comes before it. For example, I've been to London, He's been to London. Pat's been to London. In negative sentences, we usually contract have not to haven't and has not to hasn't. You haven't been to London. She hasn't been to London. Had is often contracted to apostrophe D. He'd been to London. In negative sentences, had not is often contracted to hadn't. We hadn't been to London. Will is often contracted to apostrophe LL. They'll have been to London. Notice that I pronounce have as of when I'm speaking quickly. 
they'll have been to London. And will not is usually contracted to won't. I won't have been to London. Okay, now all of that's out the way, let's talk about the uses of the perfect tenses. In very general terms, we use the present perfect simple to look back from the present time. We use the past perfect simple to look back from a point in the past. And we use the future perfect simple to look back from a point in the future. It all makes sense. Let's talk about the three key uses. First, life experiences. We use the perfect simple tenses to talk about life experiences up to a specific point in time. We don't say exactly when these life experiences happened when we use a perfect tense. We use the present perfect simple to talk about life experiences up to now. The experiences happened in the past, but we are looking at them from the present. For example, I have been to New York. That means at some point in my life up to now, I went to New York. You don't know when exactly, but you know it was before the present time and that this event is completed. I am no longer in New York. You can learn about using the perfect tenses to say how many times something happened and negative sentences in the perfect ebook that goes with this lesson. Links down below. We can use the past perfect simple to talk about life experiences that happened before a point in the past. For example, I had been to New York by the time I was 25. In this example, the point from which we are looking back is age 25. And the sentence tells you that before I was 25, I went to New York. We use the future perfect simple to talk about life experiences that will be complete by a specific point in the future. Here's that same example again. I will have been to New York by the time I'm 35. Age 35 for me is in the future. This sentence tells us that before I am 35, I will visit New York. You don't know when, but the action of visiting New York will happen before I'm 35. Okay, the next use I want to talk about is for unfinished states and actions. We can use the perfect tenses to talk about states and actions that begin before a point in time and continue up to that point. This usage often tells us the duration of the action up to a certain point. We can sometimes use the perfect simple or perfect continuous tenses when talking about how long something lasts. And I've explained this in more detail in the perfect ebook. In this video, we're just focusing on the simple tenses. We use the present perfect simple to talk about states or actions that began in the past and continue to the present. We don't know if they will continue in the future. Here is an example. I have lived in Manchester for five years. I started living in Manchester five years ago and I still live there now. We use the past perfect simple to talk about states or actions that began in the past and continued up to a later point in the past. I had lived in Manchester for five years by the time I was 23. This means that I started living in Manchester when I was 18 and I still lived there when I was 23, five years later. You don't know if I continued living there after that. That's not clear in this sentence. We use the future perfect simple to talk about states and actions that will continue to a point in the future. I will have lived in Manchester for five years by the time I'm 33. In this sentence, the starting point for living in Manchester is age 28, which is in the past. Five years later, I will be 33 and still living in Manchester. Okay, time for the final use. I'm calling this use consequences. Consequences. We can use the perfect simple tenses to talk about things that happened before a point in time but are relevant at that point. It's like talking about the consequences of an action or event. We use the present perfect simple to talk about an event that happened in the past, but is important in the present. For example, I've been out every night this week, so I'm really tired today. That's a past action with a present consequence. I was out every night up to now, and I am tired now. We use the past perfect simple to talk about an event that happened in the past that was important at a later date in the past. For example, I'd been out every night that week, so I was really tired. A past action 
with a past consequence. I went out every night of a week in the past and the next day I was tired. Both of those events are in the past. And the future perfect simple. We use the future perfect simple to talk about something that will happen before a point in the future that will be relevant at a later time. For example, I will have been out every night that week, so I will be really tired. It's a future action with a likely future consequence. I will go out every night for a week in the future and then I will be tired. Okay, that is everything I want to say about the perfect tenses today. Of course, there are more ways we use these tenses, but I think these are the most useful for you. I go into so much more detail in the perfect ebook, which you can download by clicking the link in the description box. You will also get access to the exercise pack where you can test your understanding. I would also love to see you complete the homework where you practice using some of these tenses in the comment section. You can use my examples in the video and personalize them to you. If you like the way I teach grammar and you want to master the B1, B2 or C1 level of English, I think you will love my beautiful British English B1, B2 and C1 programs. Over 10,000 students have taken these programs. Well over 10,000, I think it's 12,000 now. They're full of amazing grammar lessons, conversation lessons, vocabulary lessons, pronunciation is woven through. I think you will really like them. If you're interested, visit englishwithlucy.com. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.